Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. Some Oklahoma producers are seeing a pesky insect in their wheat crop this time of year. Joining us now is Tom Royer, our extension entomologist. Tom, tell us what you're hearing from producers and kind of what this bug can do to the crop. In the last three or four weeks, I've gotten calls from uh, some of the county agents and, and people in southwestern Oklahoma that have been finding hessian fly in wheat fields down there. Uh, this fly uh, can be a very devastating pest to wheat, uh, especially when it attacks in the fall because uh, if that wheat is starting to grow and produce tillers and getting, uh, trying to produce forage in the fall, this ins the, the larvae of this insect kills every tiller that it, that it feeds on. Uh, it will feed on it, extract the plant juices, but it kills the tiller. So it thins out the wheat and makes it uh, less likely that it can survive winter conditions and it doesn't, it obviously doesn't make very good forage uh, if you're trying to graze cattle on it. Now in terms of trying to scout this insect, you really, um, it's, it's hard and you probably need your reading glasses on, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, what you'll notice a lot of times is the wheat's very small and thin. It might be a, a darker color, but you have to get down and dig those plants up and, and actually peel back the, the tillers to find the, um, the larvae that are plugged into that plant. Uh, they don't really move once, they, once they've started feeding, so uh, you have to pull it back and you can find them or the, pup the pupae that they become, um, and that's what we look for. Unfortunately, uh, when you find them in a field, it's too late to do anything about it, really. And we don't have any effective insecticides that, that do a good job of controlling this insect anyway. So we have to use other practices to try and manage it. Now, we don't see these every year. How, no. how does the weather and the, and the conditions, how do they play in? The, the weather plays a big role. If you were to go out east where they get more uh, rainfall, you know, constant rainfall every year, or, or, or uh, we tend to see it more out there than we do in Oklahoma. Um, I think we've had fa fairly favorable weather conditions for the last few years and it's allowed it to build up and, and uh, survive on wheat uh, better than it did when we were in our drought period. The last time I saw a really big infestation was probably about 2004. So, and that was in a different part of the state than what we're seeing now. Okay. In terms of, of treatment options, you, you, you mentioned it's really limited, but you, you can change production practices a little bit yes. and look at some different varieties, yes. correct? Yes. <clears throat> I think the first thing that we, uh, if, if we have to deal with um, other conditions that uh, would favor hessian fly, the first thing that a producer needs to look at are resistant varieties. And we have a few of those, uh, including Duster and Gallagher. Uh, we know that they're resistant to hessian fly. Uh, you can also delay planting. Um, it, it isn't going to guarantee that you won't have a problem, but it will probably reduce the likelihood that you'll have a problem. Um, people that plant wheat year after year are going to have a problem because this insect overwinters on wheat stubble and oversummers on wheat stubble. So if you're not destroying that stubble or by doing a crop rotation or burying it under the ground, it's there waiting for the next year. Um, controlling volunteer wheat, that allows them to get started early in the area, so controlling volunteer wheat may be another um, management practice. But the bottom line is, if, if you're going to grow no-till uh, in, in Oklahoma and plant early, I think it's very important that you have uh, a resistant variety. If it attacks wheat in the spring, it's going to make it look like hail damage and you have to get back and, and, and pull up plants and, and look for the hessian fly pupae in the springtime to give you an idea whether it's hail or whether it's hessian fly. Okay, well we'll check back with you in the spring then, Tom. Okay. Thanks a lot. And now an update on some research on canola and weeds. Here's our Extension Cropping System Specialist, Josh Lofton. <laughs> 